Well, hi there. My name is Sandy Alnock. Welcome to my YouTube channel where today I'm going to go through the basics of some Art Impressions watercolor stamps. I've shown you some amazing watercolor before and that's a little on the scary side. So I'm going to walk through a little bit easier of a, a project. This one, this gate that I'm pointing to right now is going to be in another video that's going up today. I'll link you to it at the end. There are these other sets that are brand new for 2016 from Art Impressions and those are little self-contained sets, but we're gonna work with these two today. The foliage and the flowers. These are two sets that I always recommend everybody get to complement all the other sets because they have enough greens and flowers to kind of give you some interest in the image. This is my full collection of everything and you can see I'm a little excessive in buying a lot of these. I love these stamps and I just keep them in these cases. I break up all my sets I put all the trees together, I put gates and buildings together, and all the little flowers together. But what I want to show you today is the foliage and the flower sets and a few really simple close-up techniques on how you can get them to blend and how you color them. So the ones at the top are going to go in the foliage section, the ones at the bottom are the flowers. And we're going to dive into this, okay? So I hope that this is going to be helpful to take it step by step. I do have a palette here in case I wanted to do any coloring on that with my markers and I have some water and a brush but we're going to keep it pretty basic and we're just going to stamp the images so you can see what they are. You can use any kind of water-based markers with these. I'm going to use Tombow's but you can also use Marvies, you can use your distress markers, you can actually use distress inks and stamp with them and watercolor with them. So with the Tombows, I'm going to put my colors in the upper left, at least when I remember to uh, write them down. And I'm going to take this stamp and color over it with the marker. And if your marker dries out, you can just huff on it and just go <sighs> right onto the stamp and just let your hot breath sort of re-moisten it a little bit and it'll stamp. Now these are not stamped perfectly and that's okay. Don't stress out if that happens. And depending on the watercolor paper you're using, I'm using some cold pressed watercolor paper which has a little texture to it. And so it's a little, little bit sometimes bumpy for stamping. But with the watercoloring we're gonna do, it's not gonna matter one bit. I'm just going through all the images in this set first though, and I'm gonna stamp them. You see there's little bushes, there's little branches, and then we have a couple of grasses, a small one and a large one. And you get them all stamped, and when you're doing this, you can actually do all your stamping first, at least your background layer stamping, and then go do your watercoloring later. This will re-wet later on. So you don't have to do it all instantly. There's no time out for it. So with this little cluster, I'm just showing you how I'm just dropping some water on. I'm not pushing all the color around. I'm leaving some spots where there's no water. And that kind of gives it that broken watercolor look. And um, you can also do it different ways too. This one I'm going to saturate more with water, but notice on both of them that I'm leaving the tips of them with the edges sharp. All those little branches on the top, I'm not watercoloring over them. Anything you watercolor over is going to soften. Every time you hit something with water, it's just going to start to melt into the page. So unless you want it to be really soft, and there will be cases in which you do, you want to not go all the way to the tip and you don't want to saturate it. You don't, you don't want to use a brush that's like just really sop and wet. Now for something like this guy, I'm just putting little drops of water in the shape of the little petals that are already there. And um, you can use a little heavier water when you're doing this as long as you've got good control. This brush that I'm using is a silver brush um, from their black velvet line. This is a round number six. and I'm just dropping color on there. This brush gets a very fine point. If your brush doesn't get a fine point, this might be a little struggle for you. But there's links in the doobly do to go get a silver brush if you need one. But now I'm going to mush it out down at the bottom here. And I'm just going to let those branches at the top peek out. And don't worry that all that stuff down there is not wetting all the, the stuff that's underneath that blob of color. Because I'm going to come back in a minute. I'm going to show you something else. So we're just gonna let that dry for the time being and move on to some of the others. So this one, I'm gonna do kind of the same thing. Just put some water over those top branches and then I'm gonna let the water 
I wet my brush even more when I'm going to do this washi part. Let the water drag that color down and let it look more like a bush. Because there's sometimes when you want something to look like a cluster of flowers or a, a cluster of greens or something. And that's how you do that. So you do that for your base layer. You'll do a, a layer underneath and then after it's dry, you can add more to it. Now here's something else that you can do. You can take those same markers. If your grass doesn't fit the tuft that you need, if you want one that's longer and skinnier or something, just draw it with your marker. You can draw little leaves. You'll see in the other videos that I do with these. I draw little leaves in. I fill in spots that didn't stamp well, that kind of thing. Just little fixes that I can add. Now, this one on the left, I'm going to show you a mistake. Well, it's not necessarily a mistake. There's sometimes you may want it. The, the watercolor underneath is still damp. And you see how mushy that got? That might be a look that you want, absolutely. But just know that if it's going to be mushy like that, then, then you may want to choose to let it dry more. You can heat set it in order to let it dry more first. But look at what I'm also doing. I'm just pulling color out of there to make little wispies on the end of that little bush of flowers. So there's just a ton of little things you can do with your brush. Just practice. If you get one of these sets, just sit there with a piece of paper and stamp a whole bunch of them and practice with water. And just push the color around and see what happens. Don't worry about making a picture right away because when you're just starting, that can be a challenge. So now I stamped just the edge. I only put the marker on one edge of that little piece of, of brush. And look how beautifully that stamped a layer that looks like it's in front because I waited for that whole thing to dry. So now I'm in control of when it wets out and when it doesn't, when it stays dark and crisp and when it doesn't. So next, let's jump into the other set. This one has all the flowers in it, and this first one didn't stamp well. Not going to sweat it because I'll be able to fix that, and I'll show you how. You can also do second generation stamping, so I stamped again. Just moved the stamp around and stamped again so you get a little lighter coverage when you do that. So you can do multiple rows of things, and as they get lighter, they just look like they're further in the background. There's a couple different kinds of flowers. This one, this pink one on the right is a little branch type of thing. It can also be flowers. Lots of different ways you can do it. And you can stamp just part of it, just stamp the tip of it and get just the tip of a branch. And I mean, it, lots and lots and lots of varieties of things, of things you can do with these. And here I stamped this, this long tall one, but I only stamped a little portion of the, the second two that I, or the second, the, Second one and the third one. If I could talk, that would be helpful, wouldn't it? So now with this one that didn't stamp really well, I'm just wetting it. I'm just adding water to it and kind of filling in the spaces where it didn't actually stamp really well. And then I thought, well, wait a minute. Why don't I just go over this and make a nice big swash out of it? So I've got my, my brush nice and wet now. It wasn't super wet before, but it's nice and wet now. And I'm making just a little loose cluster right around it. But I'm letting those ones at the top retain their little little fronds at the end. So then it looks like a little piece of brush. These little guys um, are really great to put on top of a whole cluster. Like if you have a whole bunch of bushes and little scrub, if you put those or these little tiny dots across the top of them, and you don't even have to wet them a lot of times, you can just put them on top and the fine detail that's on the top layer can often just add a little sparkle to your image and be really beautiful. So then we look at these pink ones. And again, I'm gonna make a cluster out of them just by dancing the water around. And the lighter you want the color, make sure you rinse your brush out because once you pick up that color, it's gonna keep moving it. So I rinsed it because I wanted the, just that one cluster in the middle to be darker and let the outside be looser. With this little guy, I love this stamp. This is just one of the ones that I use a ton because it's got this beautiful tall frond and uh, you can you know, make little teeny tiny tips come out of some brush so you just see the ends of them or you can just wet the whole thing and make a really soft cluster. And this stamp has some other things that it can do and I'll show you that in just a second too because this one, it just has, a lot of these have a lot of variety that they can create. 
This little guy has just some little, almost graphical tips to it. So it'll create a different look for the ends of flowers in a cluster. So if you're doing one of the stamps that has a bouquet in it or you know, some kind of a cluster of, of flowers, this one will just add some really nice little fine detail to it. But you notice I'm not soaking the whole thing. If you soak the whole thing, it's gonna end up turning into a big puddle. Now this one is, we're back to one of my, that, that favorite stamp again. And one of my favorite things to do with it is to make trees out of it. So I'm just pressing the end of it, the top end. You could also mask off the end if you wanted to do a row of trees, but you could do this for scenes in any of your stamping. Just add trees to it by using this stamp. There is a set of tree stamps, and I'm gonna link you to all the AI stamps um, in the description down below. So there's lots more choices than what I'm showing you, but look how beautiful trees these make. Super gorgeous. And all you have to do is add a little bit of water down below and join them, and they look like this really misty, beautiful set of trees. So there you have it with some of the, the basics. Oh, I guess I decided I was gonna go back and add more blue. So here you can see adding a little bit of detail on top once something's dry will really help. I'm also turning the stamp different directions. Try all your stamps, turning them different ways and see what else they look like because this one, now it looks like these flowers are kind of cascading downward because I've turned the angle of it. So you can change the entire direction of all of it. So these still pictures are on my blog. If you want to take a closer look at them, you're welcome to do that. There's a link in the description down below for that. There's also some other videos that I've done with some of these art impression stamps that you might want to take a look at and see how you can make scenes out of some of the sets that they have. You can hit the subscribe button to get more from me. You can find me all over social as Sandy Allnock, and I will see you guys later. Thanks so much for spending a few minutes with me. And if you can, hit that like button if you enjoyed this and learned something from it. Thank you much. Take care. Bye-bye.